Hi, kids. Okay. Uh, Land of the Dead is next up. 2005. Uh, this is the fourth film in Romero's Dead series. Uh, Romero initially wrote the first draft uh, pre-9-11. 9-11 happened. Uh, and that kind of affected uh, people's appetite for that relatively close to that time. Anyways, uh, not a lot of interest for a zombie movie. I was we get closer to 2005, a little more interest with that. Plus the things I talked about in the Dawn of the Dead video yesterday, the success of that 28 days later, a little more appetite for zombies, a little easier to get some funding to make a movie. Um, plus now Romero has a little more something he wants to say about the Bush Cheney administration. And that's the other thing. This uh, comes out, the gap between Romero films when this comes out is five years, which is up to that point, the biggest gap in his career. He's also about 65 years old. Romero doesn't make a horror movie unless he feels like it's worth it. It's hard to make a movie. It's hard to make a horror movie. Uh, and he doesn't make one of these dead movies unless uh, he feels like he has something that he has to say that it's worth it, uh, which is why this is only the fourth one since 68, um, right? Because we've had one almost every decade, decade if you count the Night of the Living Dead uh, remake in the 90s. Um, and then uh, this is the first time that we have uh, a character appear in one of these films that appears in the other, although briefly cameo. Tom Savini uh, is the zomb zombified uh, biker uh, that he was in uh, Dawn of the Dead. The Dawn of the Dead, he's a biker. This time, he's a zombie version of that biker. But that's the first time we kind of have anything really that ties any of these films together. Um, we have some stars in this one. Uh, Romero generally prefers to work with... Um, unknown or not as big celebrity or stars. Uh, we've got Dennis Hopper, John Leguizamo in this. Uh, there's several reasons for that. One, because uh, it's easier for you to get immersed in the film uh, when you don't really know who the actors are. Plus, sometimes if you know it's a big actor, well, you know, maybe that guy's not going to die. Or maybe that guy's going to die based on the reputation. Um, and then with more stars, more celebrity, you need more funding, and then there's more complications, there's more demands, there's more things. Um, so that's part of the reason I haven't really mentioned the stars in these films. Uh, so uh, what else we got here? We have a bigger budget, uh, but it's still not huge. It's about two-thirds the budget of the Dawn of the Dead uh, remake, plus... Um, we're on a tight schedule. It's a 45-day schedule. Uh, they shoot 29 straight nights because it's a horror film. They're shooting at night. Uh, started shooting in October in Toronto. So they're shooting at night in Toronto in October. Uh, it's pretty cold. It's pretty chilly. Uh, Romero uh, elects to use limited CG not really his kind of thing. Uh, and we've got uh, a bit of evolution of Romero's style over the years. Uh, My Living Dead, his first film, he's not quite, quite sure what he's doing. Uh, not quite sure how to uh, direct your eyes on screen. Used to commercials. Uh, so his style evolved throughout the years, but also uh, talking about budgets. Sometimes you have a tight schedule, tight shoot, tight budget. You just have to get in there, get a simple shot, get out. Uh, you don't have a lot of time for a lot of coverage. We've seen that usually in the first versions of all of these series. Um, not a lot of wiggle room. Uh, and then we've got uh, Greg Nicotero doing the makeup for this one. Nicotero's first screen credit is for Day of the Dead. 
and he has appeared on this list quite a few times. Uh, in uh, addition to Day of the Dead, he also does the makeup for Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, Halloween 5, and Scream 1, and Scream 2 he works on. So he works on all of those films, and then of course Greg Nicotero goes on to be synonymous with zombies, basically, because he works on uh, Walking Dead series. Uh, all right, so what's our situation here? It's pretty similar setup, um, right? We have people in a house, and then we had uh, people in a mall, and then it's people trapped underground. Uh, now it's more of an island. Uh, you have your survivors on an island. There's like bureaucrats, power, military personnel, sort of a tight government control. Uh, survivors have to go out, venture out amongst the dead and get supplies. And then we have a continual evolution of our zombies, Night of the Living Dead. They don't have a lot of screen time presence characteristics, but as we've seen go on, they evolve what they can do. Uh, changes we had uh, last time was Bub in Day of the Dead. Uh, this time we have Big Daddy, and continually our zombies are becoming uh, more and more sympathetic. We're kind of siding with the zombies more, using the zombies uh, to highlight some uh, characteristics of man, maybe not the best characteristics. Uh, anyways, there is Land of the Dead. Thank you for watching me ramble. If you did, like, subscribe, 